wear uh, cargo pants. 60, <laughs> six, 60 cubic feet of storage space within your cargo <laughs> pants. <laughs> the hardest in your pocket is what you're going to do. The hardest in your pocket. What's next? Uh, let's see. Uh, if you are on the uh, RSI chat roll, uh, feel free to shoot us your questions for the team in Austin. Um, I will also say you guys have kind of been flying under the radar lately. I mean, we used to kind of get you know, weekly updates from Austin, and then everybody wondered where you had gone, um, other than the spectacular PU demo we saw at CitizenCon. Um, so we'd like to say right now that everybody's going to be seeing a lot more of Austin in the new year. We're going to kind of kick off showing you what they're working on in the PU. Um, in January, uh, to coincide with PAX uh, South, we're going to be doing a PU town hall where we're going to have backers interact directly with the guys right here, uh, share ideas, concerns, thoughts, all that. Um, we'll have some more details on that a little bit later today. Um, and yeah, please uh, shoot us your questions right now. We will uh, ask the uh, Persistent Universe team. These are the guys who are building Star Citizens World. Uh, we've got a lot of people asking where the asteroid hangars are going to be located. Um, and don't say asteroids. <laughs> That's what. That's why we included Nix in in our first systems because it's the location for the asteroid hangars and the under, underground asteroid base. Yeah. Nice thing about asteroids is they're all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> they are. Yeah. Let's see, um, a lot of questions about uh, kind of celestial objects. Are we going to be seeing individual moons in, in model last star system? Actually, talk, why don't we talk about what you model in a star system when you're building it? Uh, yeah, the, 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 the certainly moons, uh, we're actually going a lot farther than that. I mean, one of the, ex, uh, one of the, one of the occupations uh, will wind up being uh, Discovery. Discovery is going to have a subset that's going to have, you know, research-oriented missions. And so there will be a number of different you know, points of interest. You know, the most obvious ones being, you know, obviously, you know, planetary-sized bodies that may or you know that you know, would likely have you know, some sort of landing zone, at least in you know, a lot of situations. Uh, ditto with moons. Ditto with big space stations. There will also be a, you know, a lot of much smaller stuff: small asteroid fields, large asteroid fields, uh, cometary bodies, you know, uh, unknown gravitational anomalies to where you know someone's actually got to traipse out there and figure out exactly what it is. Uh, you know, derelict spaceships. So the solar system is actually going to be littered with a variety of interesting places to visit. But at any given time, the vast majority of that will be unknown. And it's up to these explorers to basically go through this skill-driven process to ferret this information out. And then depending upon whether or not these explorers have done that, you know, as, you know, as a result of undertaking a job, in which case the information is, is immediately transmitted back to the broker, or whether they discovered it, they basically covered all the costs on their own, and they're now the sole owner, in, you know, in theory, of that particular bit of information. They now effectively have. Uh, some insight into the solar system that no other player may have. And that's a valuable asset. When you think about it, if you go out and you find your own asteroid field and it happens to be loaded up with a particularly valuable you know, uh, type of commodity that you want to mine, there's no one else that you have to worry about you know, pulling, you know, uh, basically extracting all of that value from those asteroids. So you can just go back over and over. Um, and basically, uh, essentially, mint a fortune if you were diligent enough to go out and actually, you know, uh, find your own field. At the same time, a lot of players will avoid, you know, these big commonly known points of interest. Yeah, you know, the 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 asteroid fields that are well known to people will very quickly be depleted of all the most valuable, you know, uh, resources. And so, as a result, a lot of players will find themselves going to these, you know, so-called uh, information brokers paying a fee and then getting uh, some insight into a particular point of interest that uh, that basically provides you know whatever it is they're looking for in the case of a miner that might be an asteroid field that you know has a particularly high density of whatever they're looking for um, which would probably be uh, dictated by you know what the prices are currently in that system in the case of a scientist, um, what they might be looking for is uh, which section of the solar system has a particularly high uh, you know, number of sightings of comets because they're going to get paid via, uh, via basically taking video of a comet 
from the backside. So if you think back to like the movie Armageddon, where you had the two space shuttles approaching the backside of a comet that was throwing off all sorts of you know debris that you were having to navigate around, and that's one of the things that we would like to add to the game, which is the ability for these occupations that you're doing to present the player with opportunities. Uh, one, yeah, they're dangerous opportunities. You can die doing things that have nothing to do with combat. You can die merely as the result of, well, your, your, your mission objective is to obtain 30 seconds of uninterrupted video footage from within 500 meters of one of these uh, of one of these cometary bodies that's thrown off all sorts of stuff behind that you're going to be you know weaving, dodging, you know ducking, uh, you know uh, to prevent your ship from getting blasted. Um, same thing with uh, mining. Mining is not going to be as simplistic as just landing on an asteroid, clicking a button, and the ore is just gradually you know extracted into your uh, into your ship. Instead, there are a variety of dangerous you know scenarios that can unfold as you're basically, you know, uh, injecting, you know, this, this massive, you know, uh, massive amounts of energy to break off fragments of these asteroids. That could include everything from accidentally, you know, penetrating a compressed gas pocket. That could uh, be accidentally igniting a particularly volatile, you know, material that could blow the asteroid apart. Uh, so there's going to be a number of mechanics integrated into all of these different <laughs> occupations that are going to add a skill component and a danger component, irregardless of you know what it is you're doing. So scientists will face you know danger, um, you know uh, mercenaries will face danger. It's just danger of a different type. Um, now we've talked about uh, three of the first five landouts: uh, Nix, Earth, and Terra, I believe. Are you able to share what the other two are? Um, early, uh, the, we're we're much. We're, we're in the far earlier stages of decking out uh, Mariana and uh, Odessa. Um, Odessa is kind of reminiscent, I guess, of uh, maybe uh, Detroit, Michigan type of thing to where there's a high degree of unemployment. Basically, the city you know, is past its prime. It'll be the first uh, city that you'll be able to visit that will probably have significant amounts of uh, stores that are actually closed, vacant. Um, it's got uh, a bunch, it's basically an abandoned, I guess, ship Shipyard. construction yard. Yeah. Um, and so you can see off in the distant periphery, um, half finished, you know, hulls of ships that, you know, were never completed because the contracts to build those things were lost by the city. Um, so it's, it's, there, there, are, there are other cities, you know, uh, in that early stage, but we can't, we can't go into too much detail on those. Okay. Space Nation. Correct, yes. Um, yeah, well, sp space stations will be another, that's, it's another area of, I would say, uh, intense development in that we have all of the established landing zones within any given system to where you can actually get out of your ship, but to enable us to have the level of flexibility that we want for the mission creation system, we wanted the ability to effectively put mobile, you know, mobile landing zones wherever we wanted within the system, and that's going to be accomplished in large part via these space stations. And so, just as Mark was mentioning earlier, how we were, you know, doing the, you know, the low tech and the super monitor, you know, uh, you know, art sets. One of the art sets is basically this uh, space station set, such that we can populate these things with the t with the hero props he was talking, so we can. We can effectively make space stations that are geared towards luxury, you know, resort colonies. We can make them so that they're geared towards mining colonies, uh, military outposts, a number of different things. And then the mission system will utilize these as, you know, as as temporary landing zones to put, you know, per, uh, to put points of interest in the middle of, you know, whatever it is that we want. You mentioned uh, unemployment on uh, that one planet. Is that going to tie into the uh, economy model? Can we? Uh Bring new yes, jobs to absolutely. Uh, the the economic simulator. So that's basically the big background, you know, simulation that's going to be running, and it's going to be providing a lot of inputs to these cities. Uh, for example, it's going to dictate the uh, population, the per capita wealth, um, the crime ratio, uh, what types of you know jobs you know are available within a given system. 
Um, all of these different things are basically going to be fed as inputs into the individual cities, and they're going to have an impact in regards to uh, not just you know what you were mentioned there, but also insofar as which type of NPCs you see. Uh, what you'll have is a natural ebb and flow uh, for all of these systems, to where at any given moment you might have a little bit you know greater than normal uh, proportion of you know uh, of criminals. You might have a little bit you know less. Than normal you know, percentage of businessmen or tourists or commodities traders or whatever um, landing at it you know uh, landing at some landing uh, landing at a site that's basically experiencing you know a lot of economic hardships is going to be more dangerous because the simulator would wind up cranking up the number of you know criminals that that system would be generating and therefore when you land You've got a much uh, a much larger you know than uh, normal uh, possibility of actually running into a dangerous situation. You could be you could be mugged. You could be held up. You know you could, you know, a variety of different things. I also want to tie it into the visual look of a city, so that if uh, you, you visit a city, you know at one point and it's thriving and it looks nice and there's not any trash on the ground and. Uh, there's no graffiti on the walls, and then you come back a month later, and the place has just gone to hell. And it's like there's spray paint on the wall, there's like crap on the floor, there's like you know stuff everywhere. But, and but, that's but, but one of the interesting things is that it's not just going to be a bullion to where well we dictate that there's a lot of graffiti.